Hey there guys, it's Mr. Fantastic here with another video on a Flintstone themed art world. Um, we're using the same container as last time, which is um, 199 from what? You know, six and a half inches by six and a half by three and a half, no, by three inches tall, sorry. Nice little clip on there that we use uh, 20 millimeters um, wire gauzes for the air vents in the top and a 16 millimeter drill bit then to drill the hole out. As you'll see now, I sort of drill into the wood first to make a recess for the drill bit to sort of punch through like that, you know, so it gives it a nice clean edges so there's less clean up at the end and just like a little skim with a knife at the most. You know, I've gone for five with this one and so far it seems to work, you know, the ants don't try and nest out in there, you know. And, you know, I've used the 10 millimeter drill bit here for my 12 millimeter test tubes which they're pictured next they're plastic so they're fairly easy to cut and, but they are still fairly brittle though and um, you know once you have got your the holes drill I just use um, glue gun on the outside to tack them and then glue gun like put the gauze down and then glue gun around so that the glue sits through the gauze onto the plastic and holds tight and these are the test tubes I use 75 millimeters long they kind of work pretty well and I got a thick old tube that sits over and then to connect and just to stop the tubes from blocking using some cotton wool and cling film and sort of wrapping it over and twisting it to create a nice little easy removable plug and you can see the twist there so you can feed that into the pipe and then just use that to pull it out then just make sure it's long enough for the tube you've used I, I, into, like, I like to sink mine into the, the grout itself so that the ants can obscure the tube so they look um, nice and natural to a certain point minus the miniature houses and you know follow the directions that you get with the particular grout you get you're going to want just plain grout no um, adhesives or anti-molding agents or anything like that just basic grout and just sort of mix it get, get a nice sort of even consistency but if you follow the directions it should be fairly straightforward the quantities might not always be ideal, but you can, you know, substitute them if it says a cup, use half a cup. This is um, the design I was going for, using my pre-carved little houses and rocks. And on the right hand side you can see a reptile plant in its full, which has been plucked off one, which has got like 30 other ones, and then just sort of cut down. And the ends melted just to make little footings and pressing it against the lighter just to get it flat there. It only takes a second of heat too. And for the um, substrate, we use coconut husk and dirt from the back garden, which is dug from around the foot down. I've used boiling water on the dirt, like, you know, let it dry out and then mix them together. They make an ideal little um, substrate, which bonds quite well. With your grout, when you're um, doing any of your outworld, sort of placing it into the middle and working it out to try and push the air to the sides and it makes it easy to see if there's any air bubbles but if you put your test tubes into the grout to sort of make sure the grout comes up from underneath the test tube pushing the air and then going over the top so if you've got any small species of ants then you don't run the risk of little holes you can however if you, if you don't put your substrate in straight on you can go in and patch up those little holes first on the whole though it's worked pretty fine and um once I've sort of settled the grout into where I like it, I start adding the little pre-made grout rocks and that I've got, trying to tie the edges in. You can um, also use a wet paintbrush, you know, you could damp the rocks up as well to stop them sucking the moisture up so well and creating cracks on the joints, you know. You can monitor them a little bit with a bit of water on the paintbrush though, but it's an easy way to bond. That's what I um, switched to in the end because it moves the grout a lot easier. You know, and then you just play around with them too quite a bit once they're in there then. And um because I'm sort of trying to follow a set design as well, it makes it a little bit easier. The little gap between the two houses in the centre is being sort of brushed so that it is smooth because you can't get um you can't see it so well and so it makes clean and easy so that nothing gets down the sides and hides. And with the plants I just merely like push them into the grout and then sort of push the grout back over the stem of it 
do the side like that and then I just sprinkled some dirt and you know added a bit of water just to make sure that it um that the plants are hidden where they come out of the grass if it's not looking so well and after uh, you want to come back every couple of hours because you, you want to get it where it's firm and not solid and um, you just want to sort of go through it and you know start sort of removing the grout cover in your test tube so that you, you can get your ants access and then start to tidy up I like to scrape all the visible grout and take the top layer off because it sheens a lot and um, then using a dental toothpick then just sort of scratching horizontal sort of striations in there you know which you can use any type of tool and you know it creates nice little sort of fake rocks which is the same method I use to do the um, houses and as you can see here uh, I've sort of cleared up the path now scraped it down a little bit so that it was all fairly flat and putting in the little sort of flagstones now I start off with quite small flagstones and I do sort of work at the other Flintstones rock I done with slightly larger flagstones but I got carried away but you'll have to experiment with the time in which it's best to do it with your particular grout because depending on the amount of detail you want will depend on how dry it is and the tool that you're using so a little bit of experimentation will be sort of handy but that's the fun in learning because sometimes you, you, you make the best um, discoveries when you know you're trying for something else so I just use a stiff paintbrush to sort of remove the grout but the reason I haven't put a lot of dirt in here it, although it does look like there's quite a lot is so that at the end I just sort of use water and some grout painted over and then sprinkle the, um, the dirt over that then so that it tacks to where I want it because the ants do use the path as a little highway but you know it, it's a little bit tedious to do the path you could come up with like a little die to sort of make it a little bit simpler and a press just to um, press into the the grout to sort of create your rough pebble mat and you can just go over it then so but it's, it's the start of it was slow but once I got going then I felt like it kind of moved along a little bit and trying to blend the houses into the grout as well keeping the same lines that are from the house so that it all looks as though it's one and meant to be there Just remembering to remove the loose material and try and get it out so that it doesn't sort of because it's still quite tacky well not so much tacky but you know it, it, it can dry and stick to other parts which you don't really want and it gets in your way quite a bit but messing around with it rocks aren't perfect so you know you can just as soon as you think it looks like a rock you can be good if you're trying to go for a particular type of rock just have a little look if you if you're really stuck for how to do rocks the best suggestion would be is to look at reptile enclosures people like oh, that's where i learned to carve my rocks and stuff like that mainly or in um role-playing models you know warhammer um, games like that the model and the scenery other little projects like that have helped teach me some little tips and tricks You know, I went a little bit nuts on this, but it, because the, um, all this is under kind of, you know, a close camera lens with zoom, you know, try and make it look as nice as I can so the hands kind of look like they're in a cool little enclosure. And then one side finished, I went all over and, you know, to begin with, with um, it's just mud and water, you know, mess around with the consistency, how much mud to water to get the effect you want, but you can always start off with a lighter mix and you can layer it and re layers really give you some nice effect and it really makes it pop whilst you're painting this like I really enjoy this part like you know the final layers where it just you know you can see what you got but this is where it's like it, it you know it tells you whether you've done a good job or not and I think it turned out pretty nice you know my hands are very happy and it you give them a new lease of life I thought they were hibernating but they didn't in the time from when I started this they, they were cocoons and then they, their colony doubled amazing managed to get the nanotech actually being sort of extracted from his cocoon by his sisters it was amazing to watch but yeah you can sort of as the mud dries using a stiffer brush you can like on the path to take the mud off the top and leave it in the gaps because it does dry considerably lighter it all depends on the dirt that you use you know so again you know if you've got some like 
local places, dig down deep enough, you know, to try and get it past all the horrible stuff, you know, avoid pesticides and that if you if you know they've been used. So, because your ants are very susceptible to small things, they're only tiny little creatures. To be fair. The only thing I would have liked to have done is maybe added some small bits of colour to the door. Next time might be an idea to maybe like get some small bits of plastic to have them cut or something like that, some of the ants won't be that purified. But um Yeah, I use this sort of bent paintbrush because you know I I like to sometimes paint the rocks with dirt before they go in because you do get hard to reach areas then but Using plastic paint brushes, I like it, it melts them quite nicely, you know, and then it gets in the hard to reach areas. I will do a separate video on the sculpting of um, the little rocks that I like to use in my things, you know. It keeps the material, it's very simple grout, you know, so you just get in the dirt. And then the reptile plants are leftover plants from my, my lizard, you know. So, and there you go, we're following them. Um, one of my little lassie is Nigel workers in this enclosure. You can see her making her way back into the nest. But once it's all set up and I added a bit of extra dry dirt, you know they've settled in really well. And, all, and everything sits really nicely I find. So but if you do enjoy these type of videos, you know give me a thumbs up or give me a comment about it you know if there's anything else you'd like to see me do i'm i really do enjoy projects like this this these are the little things you know make me jump out of bed in the morning excited to build but using such few materials I managed to come up with something i feel it was quite effective at the end of the video now i've got a few pictures of some of the outworlds i've done which are just natural outworlds but all using the exact same method that I've used in here. These are just some of the older ones I've done, so they look a little blander as it goes on, but it shows you know you gotta start somewhere and have to, to get somewhere else. So, yeah, there will be a update video very shortly meaning to do it but I wanted to get this video out first and then there was some delays because I kept messing it up but we got it out there now and yeah so if you've enjoyed this video you know subscribe like it if you'd like to see more videos like this or you know comment to let me know if there's anything that I'm missing or anything else you'd like me to look into to do with ants but other than that thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video bye